Hi everybody and welcome again to Spartan Sports Report here on TV3 and Sam and I are happy to be back, aren't we Sam? We've well, had a great, couple of yeah. weeks off. We've had a couple of weeks off, but it's nice to be back in the saddle. And this guy with us, he's had some time off. Yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 2019, we're ready to roll. Yeah. Brent Duncan, Athletic Director of CHS. I probably don't need to introduce you. I imagine people know who you are since, uh, but you've got the wrong color on. Well, since the Spartans aren't playing that, I thought I could wear. But you can wear. I mean, the Colts are still in the running, so you can wear that. We'll we'll, we'll get with that. So. <laughs> that was fun. It was a good game. I, yes. I, I tried to get through the ball game without hearing, but coach, you know how hard that is. But <laughs> I still got to <laughs> yeah. watch it on tape. So. <laughs> okay, uh, I might talk a little bit about high school basketball. Um, Spartans. Uh, we'll talk about the boys first of all. They. Got through the first half of the season with a victory over Greenfield and then went to the wedding tourney and played pretty good, but kind of hit a bump in the road here. And it's, uh, uh, they've been kind of off the tracks for a couple, three games. Yeah, we've played some, you know, a little bit better competition the last four or five games. Mm -hmm. well. So, you know, Zionsville's pretty solid. And, yes. And then beat Team Catholic. And then, you know, Greensburg kind of caught us with their guard down in the wedding and mm -hmm. had an opportunity to come back and play them at their place. And, Really had opportunity to win the game a couple times, just didn't get the ball in the basket when we had it tied. And sure. Had a missed shot and a turnover, which they capitalized on both of those. So you go from the tie game down to four or five or whatever it was. And then tough one on uh, Saturday night to bowl with the Newcastle Trojans. So. Yeah, we, uh, the Spartans were in control for three quarters and then to let your opponent score 35 points in the final eight minutes, uh, that doesn't happen very often. No, and I. I you know, you, there's lots of things that could have taken place. And, sure. Know, just kids playing the game. But they were able to get the game to their pace, from our pace, and their pace is a little bit faster than us, and we prefer to play a little bit slower. And things fell in their favor, and we missed some free throws and some layups down the end, which cost us. And Went into overtime for the second time this season, and not like other seasons, the Spartans had, were winning overtimes like they were ringing out of the yeah, one out time of the skies, won, but all of a sudden. we won 10 in a row overtime, so. So well, it's sort level, of so. beginning to <laughs> change a little bit, you think? Well, you know, it all balances out in the long run. That's right. That's true. It's like the yeah, weather. You don't like to lose. Kids are playing hard. And yes. That was a tough week last week without your your leader at the game mm -hmm. both days because of his passing of his father. Mm -hmm. Brown had to be in with him, which is where he needed to be in. You don't know what kind of dynamics that has with the kids and yes. how they're affected. But uh, hopefully it's a learning situation and a growing situation from all of them. And we'll bounce back and be ready to go this coming Saturday when we travel to Play the Bearcats at not Muncie Field, right? At Muncie South, South High School. So. <laughs> Are they working on that field house at all? Do you know? Uh, I haven't been up there for a while. I saw some dumpsters out there earlier in the summer. But who knows what they're really doing? When did that damage occur? A year, a couple of years oh, ago? Probably two years. Two, two winters years. ago. Is it okay? And a tornado went through and ripped mm -hmm. part of the roof off of the field house yeah. and made it unplayable. I guess mm -hmm. the water poured in there and had to remove the floor. Some sprinkler pipes burst and lots of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All kind of kind of on the it's south. Too bad the, because that's one of the that's one of the old palaces. That's right. That, that that's I right. hope in, that they Indiana. can preserve. Yeah. But, uh, the wigwam's good. gone. I hope that that one can mm -hmm. stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll probably be a while before the Bearcats return to to the field house mm -hmm. if they ever do. I guess right. because it's odd going in playing yeah. a purple team in a red and red and black gymnasium. <laughs> the, colors of the old Muncie South Rebels there. So. <laughs> It's a little different. It's a, it's a good gymnasium, right? It seats like 6,500 people, so it's not a small gym. Which one? Uh, Southside. No. Oh, that's, Southside's a cracker box. Oh, is it? I was uh, thinking it was. maybe 1,500 to 2,000. I, I, was, and I did a game there at once. And it's really strange. Okay. Um, I've, it's about a court and a half long, and the bleachers go on down in the other half of court. It's, it's an odd design, but. Okay. Uh, they get loud in there, and but it's, it's, a tough, right on the floor. it's a tough place to play. It was a high school gym mm -hmm. because yeah. it was Muncie South. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times South used to play a lot of their games at the field house as well. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the big ones they would play at the field right. house. Yeah, right. The ones they wanted to have a close atmosphere, they'd put it in the South. <laughs> <laughs> so the Spartans travel to Muncie and to Southside Saturday night, and hopefully we can get things start another winning streak here. Hopefully right the ship, you know. Yes. Most people don't know, but the loss this past Saturday was the first loss in, since January 29th of 2016 at home, so. I know. First loss in We had a pretty season, good record as far as years, so. Yes. But, you know, those are going to happen. Oh, you know? absolutely, yeah. You don't like for them to happen, but 
And in the way it happened, you don't like that because we had it in control. But yes, there were still teenagers running up down the floor mm -hmm. playing basketball. So records are made to be broken. Didn't somebody say that? Well, I just did. I'm sure. If not, Yogi probably had some one of his yogiisms. <laughs> Well, we we knew that um, for the first three quarters that Newcastle just wasn't shooting the ball well, and, no, and uh, those three hole. pointers were were uh, hitting the front of the rim and bouncing off. But I thought if they ever if yeah. they ever get it going, and, <laughs> right. and it wasn't just Bumbleo, it was Burris and yes, and uh, I forget the other number four's name. But well, then you start double teaming Bumbleo, and that leaves one of these other guys open, and. That's he's the real deal. He's not going to Ball State for no reason. So, uh, <laughs> That's for sure. Ball State's not a major market, but it's still Division One basketball. Yes. So. And of course, their six eight kids not playing. So mm -hmm. because of an injury, had ACL surgery in July. Oh, okay. Talked to him a little bit. He's going back to January fourteenth to get looked at, but he's already signed at Purdue. So that's the Burris boy, isn't it? Oh, uh, that's oh. the uh, Willis Gillis. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, I was impressed with him. Um, we were up doing a game up there um, and afterwards he came out after the game he and his mother came out Gillis and his mother and he was shooting free throws and she was rebounding for him and I thought mm -hmm. here after a game uh, that showed dedication showed that he really wants the game so yes I was I was impressed with him yes and um, maybe um, things might have been different the other night if he was playing I mean it certainly Probably wouldn't have helped us any, but I always hate to see a kid not be able to play, especially his senior year. Right. Was he injured in a game or a football? I don't know if he got hurt somehow over the summertime, but I'm not exactly okay. sure how he tore his ACLs. Yeah. Well, I hope he recovers sufficiently and he could be on the Purdue team. That'd be great. That'd be great. If you're a Purdue fan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know any. <laughs> we saw another uh, Purdue recruit uh, up at the wedding tournament. Yeah, the little guard from South Bend Adams. Uh-huh. Pumped in 25 against us or mm -hmm. whatever it was. Yeah, we've had some pretty good competition in the recent games. Yeah, you know, and it, it's good for our kids. And, sure. You know, we got a lot of kids from the boys' side that do not have a lot of varsity playing experience, so it's the first time through those battle-tested grounds. Mm -hmm. It's a little different winning at the varsity level than taking care of the games at the JV level. <laughs> so, but we're making adjustments and we're making strides, and we'll get everybody back in the ranks and sure. rally the troops and go get them Saturday. A lot of games to play yet. It's amazing. It's getting close. The girls' draws a week from Sunday. So oh, uh, yeah, we we'll talk <laughs> about that here. Yeah. January 18th, the girls' draw comes out. They have the three section. games this week. That's a yeah, busy week for them. Yeah, they play the Red Devils tomorrow night at Richmond and got the Lady Wildcats coming in on Friday night. And then you go know, traveling to Garen Catholic. They called today and wanted to know if we'd move the game to 12 and 1 30. And I said, uh, after talking with our coaches, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not going to get done playing basketball at 9.30 at night with the girls and get them on a bus at 9.15 in the morning to travel up. To be yeah. ready to play if they weren't playing so. Friday night. Then if we weren't playing Friday night, we would have. Uh -huh. It's just That's hard to have a girls game on Friday, and then some schools still want to play in the afternoon, but it's hard to play a Friday night game and turn around and play on a Saturday morning. So sure. It's not fair to our kids. Right. So. I'd like to uh, give a little programming note on that. Uh, game on Saturday. We will have on KMix, we'll have the girls game from Garen Catholic. The boys uh, will be at Muncie Central. We won't be able to cover that one. So uh, we will follow the girls. I'll give you messages. I'll keep you up. Please do. Well, the Lady Spartans are 8 and 9 going into uh, and in the holiday tourney. They beat Southwestern and they lost a couple of games. So yeah, so right kind of ran out of gas a little bit after talking to Coach a little bit. You know, We had about right. an 8 point lead on uh, Scottsburg, who was 12 and 2 at the mm -hmm. time, and just kind of fell apart in the fourth quarter and ran out of steam. And, yeah. And then the same thing happened against uh, Charlestown. Just ran out of gas in the fourth quarter a little bit. So, and when you don't put the ball in the bucket, it compounds your problem. <laughs> so, but you know they got the Lady Red Devils tomorrow night. So hopefully we'll travel to Richmond. Right. Richmond's four and 11. Uh, Franklin County is six and 11. This here Friday night, and Garen Catholic is four and 12. So. We get three wins here, you guys. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice to be eleven and nine coming out of the week, heading yeah. into the next the last week mm -hmm. with uh, well, we got East Central and Tampa uh, Knights next week. Oh, uh, let's see. That should be uh, wrapping up pretty much the season, give or take. Yeah, we got hard to believe there. Yeah, and we you're down to Rushville too. Is uh, I forgot them. I think after these three games, you only got three games left. Yeah. I think. East Central, Rushville, and Pendleton. Right. So right. Pendleton will be girls' senior night. Mm-hmm. We'll go from there. Boy, they come around. 
in a hurry, don't they? The senior nights when you have uh, senior nights and a couple other sports events, I think, too. Yeah, tomorrow night's senior night for swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they do have East Central tomorrow night. And start, uh, I think it's East Central tomorrow night. And it starts at uh, probably 5.30. And then uh, yeah. Wednesday night's senior night for wrestling against Hagerstown. It starts at 6, I believe. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to imagine. It seems like we just started winter sports. Well, the weather outside is not helping us. We kind of got us spoiled still thinking that we're in fall because <laughs> you know, it's January and we're talking the middle 40s here. No snow on the ground and my grandson got a snowboard for Christmas and he's like, hey, where's the snow? So, uh, he's waiting. Well, there's still time though, I think. I, well, I'm not hold, I'm not holding my breath. I know we're going to get bit sometime. The uh, ski but, slope down at Barnesburg is probably really sad. You know, I drove down there Saturday because the conference swim meet was down there and of course, we had three winners. We had Quentin Jones, who won the, the diving on Friday night. Good. The school record again as a sophomore. And then Audra Volts and uh, Skylar Cavins both won the 100-yard breaststroke in the, in the conference meet Saturday at right. South Dearborn. So as I drove by Perfect North Slopes, it was pretty barren except for the, just the main areas. And Gee, there were yeah. some people out skiing, but I got to figure it's man-made snow and it's got to be really icy. Yeah, <laughs> have to be. So. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, that's kind of a resource or not having a, a good season at all. Uh, back to boys basketball, and uh, TV3 was at the game with Newcastle Saturday night, so uh, let's uh, look at some of the highlights from that game. Yeah, number three, right. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he makes he's it look an Indiana All-Star, sure. I would think so. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, there's our main. Yeah, right no, that's a pretty good job, number 30. Yeah. <laughs> Wish uh, there would have been a few more people there. Nice deal. Yeah, there's a decent crowd. Uh, Colts game probably kept some people mm -hmm. at home. And Saturday nights uh, seem to me don't draw quite as well as Friday nights. Big I that's your experience. No, Friday there, nights are so a big, big draw. Jacob Brown's had a couple of good games, Greensburg and and Saturday night at Newcastle. Yes, making his presence known underneath. He, Would he have 12 points in each game? I think so. There's another number 50, yeah. Yeah, he's a young junior. Yeah, yeah. And all the things that went well in the first half and the first part of the third quarter just kind of yes. fell away. And, Characteristic for us, we kind of cut out of our the way we play. Right. Yeah, we controlled it for three quarters, and then Newcastle sort of took over. And it was um, that way down at Greensburg on Friday night that they kind of controlled the tempo as well. Mm-hmm. Another one by Jake. And we had to score up 15 with Mr. Layup with chance to go to 17, and they hit a three, and it went to 12, and then it was eight by the quarter. And once I got back into single digits, you're, you're back in the ball game. Yes. Still up seven with 50 seconds to go. And he had some shots with people on him. Yeah, yeah, he Step did. Step and a half behind the line. He just didn't go our way at the end, or we didn't make our own breaks. Kid that I think is playing very well for us right now. And we saw him a little bit ago in a, on a breakaway there is Ethan Smith. He's uh, he's really coming into his own, I think. Mm -hmm. He's done a good job defensively. You know, he was guarding the kid from Shelbyville until he kind of got popped in the mouth and knocked his teeth out a little bit. And then uh, I thought he did a good job on Comer at Greensburg, and I thought he did a really good job on Bumbleo. I know Bumbleo yeah. ended up with 35, but they were 35 they were contestants. <laughs> Okay, we're going into the overtime now, and it's uh, time running down the last second shot uh, by the Trojan. Yeah, and we got him to take the shot we wanted, and we didn't secure the mm -hmm. rebound. Yeah, the time two extra shots at it, and he really just kind of flipped it up there at the end. Yes. It went in. And we had a wild shot at the end, but it didn't. Uh, we had a shot at the end of the regulation that went down in the bucket and out. That would have won the ball game. Mm -hmm. Missed a layup about. Three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and all those little things add up in the yeah, long run. And you can't point to any one thing. Well, everybody remembers the end because it's the climactic part of the game. Sure. You forget all the little things you didn't do well in the first and the second quarter that cost us a bucket or we had a turnover, we missed a free throw. And, you know, we had a couple of kids that shoot 90% free throws and missed three out of four mm -hmm. at the end. So 
you know, those things happen. Sure. So you don't like to see them happen. But. A lot of pressure for 15, 16, 17, 18-year-old <laughs> kid. I mean, it's a, a big crowd there. Everybody wants to win. They don't want to miss it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not trying to do it wrong. Right. The same with turnovers. You know, intentional turnovers. I mean, they're all. No, well, you know, and Noah had three offensive fouls called against him, and you know, so. which is kind of unusual. Yeah, he uh, had to come out of the game and everything. But uh, yeah, a lot of as you said, a lot of factors fed mm -hmm. into that final game and everything. And in the overtime, we just couldn't try to shot, didn't we? Get the tip and. And uh, uh, I, can't no, I think they got the tip, the tip right. So, yeah. and missed. I think they got. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I think they got the tip, but we, we stole ball it away. Or right. 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 Yeah, almost right after that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, hopefully things will turn around here when we uh, visit the Bearcat. Muncie Central, by the way, is only four and seven, which is kind of unusual, I guess, uh, in a way. They've kind of struggled the last couple of years, you know, for as dominant they've been for years. A couple years ago, they had a big kid last year, if I remember, or two years. Was that two years ago? They had a big, big kid. Yeah, you know, it'll be a good game. It's yeah, to play. yeah. They come ready to play, and you know, even though their records not where probably sure. they play some good competition. Or Central Conference, and they're averaging 65 points a game, but they scored 102 against Yorktown in the second game of the season. So well, we're hoping the game's in the 40s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was sitting at the Greensburg game, and the baseball coach was up there, and. You made a comment about man, you guys are in the sixties this year, that's like a hundred for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> well it should be uh, and they're home to Richmond on Friday night, so maybe the Red Devils will wear them down a little bit and well, that's a good thing you get them on a night after they play and you know, of course unfortunately right. Newcastle yeah, played well, Richmond rested. the night before they played us and came back and was able to clip us both and you know, Bumble as we talked about him and there's other sports at our school, but you know, he's the real deal. He got thirty five against us, he got thirty seven against Richmond the night before. Yeah, so it's not yeah, like a fluke yeah. thirty five in yeah. against us. So you're a you've been a coach and a player and everything, but the kids it's long layover from a Saturday to a Saturday. After a game like Saturday night, would they rather play real quick or it just depends layoff? on what you're working on. Okay. So I know uh, the kids will practice today. Coaches actually give them tomorrow off in case they want to attend the funeral. And mm -hmm. I know the coaching staff want, is going to go up, so kids will have tomorrow off. And that extra day this week is a beneficial for us okay. in the circumstances that we're in. So I just wondered. I didn't know how it affected you. If I think it's after... different for every kid. Some okay. kids won't bother a bit. <laughs> Other kids will take it to heart for many days. So it just depends on the person itself. So Okay. Okay. I was wondering, um, we thought I had a chance to talk to Cody Smith before the ball game. He's your freshman coach, uh, a nice young man, doing a good job. They're 6-4 and four right now. Yeah, they're doing a good job. You know, of course, obviously, from their standpoint, four of the better freshmen are already on the JV, so that gives <laughs> some right. kids some extra time to, <laughs> kind of raid his to roster. learn the game a little bit that's been in different positions than they've probably been in in the 7th and 8th grade. So that, that's beneficial to those kids that are with the freshman kids that are learning to play maybe a different spot or a different role. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the long run, that'll just help your program get stronger. With those four kids that probably dominated a lot of the playing time as middle school kids are now on the JV and you're getting four yes. other opportunities for kids to play. We had a chance to talk to Cody. We might look at that right now. Cody, before we talk about the Spartans and their varsity game so far, I'd like to ask you about your freshman team. Uh, how are you fellows doing? Well, we're doing pretty good. Um, we're six and four on the season, Fran. Um, we've beat some pretty respectable programs. We beat Shelbyville on the road, uh, beat Greensburg on the road. So, like I said, those are respectable programs uh, throughout the eastern half of Indiana. So, um, we're doing good as far as wins and losses go. But you know what? My my job is to improve their skills at the freshman level, and we're doing the best we can. So, okay, well, uh, who's coming up that looks looks good? Um, as far as, as as far as scoring ability, Quentin Leisure scores the ball pretty well. Um, don't find a lot of scoring ability at the freshman level typically, at least from my experience. So that's good to see. Um, but you know what? We're we're a defensive team. There's a lot of kids that can play at the next level because they do the. Th the Spartan way things that I say that you know they play defense they rebound the ball they're tough kids um, so there's a lot of them that could play at the at the next level and that goes for all 11 players in my book so go to these fellows move up in the eighth grade uh, you get them right out of the middle school what, what's your biggest job to prepare them for JV basketball that that's my job and, and I'll tell you what it's tough to going from eighth grade to ninth grade and then from ninth grade to JV basketball so you know that's 
<laughs> it's a tough job, but nevertheless, we love doing what we love to do, so that's all that matters. That's a big job, but you did it, didn't you? You were a Spartan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I played freshman my freshman year, then moved up at the end of my freshman year. So I know how it goes, and that's what we tell them. You know, my assistant coach, Landon Spears, he did the same thing. He moved up, um, he moved up at the beginning of the season, um, freshman year. So we both have experience at, at the high school level, and we tell them, hey, just because you're not getting playing time or just because you're not on JV right now doesn't mean anything. You know, playing time isn't what it's about. It's about developing your skill, learning how to be coachable at that age, and, and then, you know, see what happens from there so you guys are doing a great job or we wouldn't see the Spartans JV and varsity squads that we have today say it again I'm sorry I say we wouldn't have the JV and varsity squads we have today if uh, you fellows weren't doing your job yeah yeah well uh, I appreciate that but you know coach Brown does a great job of developing the whole program through the feeder system you know K through 12 so you know I'm just a follower he's the leader and he, he does a great job of, of getting everybody involved so the JV and varsity are back home after a seven game road trip varsity went four and three I know they would like to have come home with uh, with a seven and oh record but it didn't happen yeah the wedding tournament's always a, a tough tournament for them um, varsity always see some great talent up there um, they had the kid going to Purdue on Zionsville and then uh, of course we didn't play Cathedral but they had the kid going um, wherever he's going where's he going um, D1. Um, anyways, that they we always see great talent. Um, so um, I thought we played pretty well, other than the Greensburg game at the wedding tournament. But we bounced back last night and played them tough last night. Um, I thought I thought we scored the ball pretty well. So um, yeah, the wedding tournament's always tough. But um, again, it's always good to see that kind of talent because we. It's the kind of talent we may have to beat at the regional or you know sectional championship game. So it's good to see that. The tough loss last night. The Spartans gave up a lot of points. They, their defense wasn't up to the task last night. Yeah, um, but again, we scored the ball better. Um, so I guess we got to look at the positives out of it. Um, we got the ball in the lane to Jacob a lot. Our guards did a great job of post feeding him. Um, so even though you know we gave up a lot of points, there's still some things that we did positively that I believe um, that we can build upon. So and, and I again, I don't think. You know, 73 points, when's the last time we gave that up? But, you know, so, again, just look at the positives and go from there. What are you expecting out of Newcastle tonight, Cody? Well, um, as the freshman coach, I don't do much scouting anymore, but I know they got um, Bumbleo, he's a senior. Right. Um, the kid can do it all. He can drive it, he'll shoot it if you don't have a hand up. Um, and it's his first step on his drive so quick, it's ridiculous. So, um, and not only him, but they got some role players that can score the basketball as well. So it should be an interesting game tonight. Looking forward to it. Cody, thanks a million. The best of luck with you and your freshmen throughout the season. Thank you. I appreciate it, Fran. Thanks a lot. Cody Smith, a freshman coach at CHS, and he is doing a good job. Yeah, he's doing a good job. His life's about to take a change. They're going to have their first little one here oh, in the yeah. next few months, so good for he's them. going to experience a little different <laughs> life than just freshman basketball. Well, so. He's very well spoken. So. <laughs> Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, is he on the staff at CHS? or is No, he's staff? actually just got a new position with, I can't tell you exactly what it was. He worked with the, uh, the JAG program jobs of, for American graduates or whatever that okay. stands for. And then he's got a different title now, so I can't tell you exactly. We just yeah. started this week, so I can't tell you exactly <laughs> okay, what it is. Well, he is in the high school building, but he's not a part of the high school staff. New okay. job, new baby. Coming. I don't <laughs> yeah. know what time, but it's coming. <laughs> Sports this week at CHS on Tuesday, co-ed swimming with East Central at the CHS pool, the Lady Spartans, basketball at Richmond, gymnastics, mill home meet CHS gym with Newcastle and New Palestine. On Wednesday, the boys' freshman basketball will be at Muncie Central, wrestling with Hagerstown, CHS gym. On Thursday, gymnastics with Rushville, CHS gym. And Friday, the Lady Spartans and Franklin County's Lady Wildcats Spartan Bowl. On Saturday, the EIAC wrestling tournament at Lawrenceburg. Co-ed swimming at South Dearborn with Oldenburg Academy also taking part. Lady Spartans basketball at Seton Catholic. Spartan boys basketball with Muncie Central at Muncie Southside Middle School Gym. In the middle school sports this week, Monday, boys white basketball team home with Centerville and home Wednesday with Newcastle. The game's at Spartan Arena at the middle school. On Tuesday, boys red home 
The red team is home to South Dearborn, and Saturday it takes part in the Newcastle Invitational. Monday, girls basketball red team goes to Centerville, and the white team plays at Cambridge City. And Tuesday, the white team will be at St. Mary Rushville. Wednesday, the red team plays at Seton Catholic, and Thursday goes to Union County. Also Thursday, the white team meets Newcastle in Spartan Arena. And Saturday, the wrestling team takes part in a scrimmage program at Greensburg starting at 8.30 in the morning. So a lot of sports going on this week. Yeah, just a little correction on Saturday. The girls are going to Garen Catholic in Indiana, oh, okay. not Seton Catholic. Okay, so. I put Seton, yeah. But that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> One of those parochial schools. <laughs> Here's some area team records for girls basketball. Richmond's four and twelve. They lost to McCutcheon, sixty-five to fifty-four, on their last time out. They're home Tuesday with the Lady Spartans. Centerville is five and eleven. They lost at Hagerstown, thirty-six to nineteen. Home with Shenandoah on Tuesday. They'll be at Winchester Thursday. Union County is thirteen and four. They won sixty-four to thirty over Seton Catholic. Home with Eastern Hancock Wednesday and home Saturday with Union City. Cambridge City, 8-8. Eight eight. They lost 60-41 to 41 to Northeastern. They play Thursday at Hagerstown. Franklin County is 6-11. They lost 55-28 to 28 to Greensburg at Connorsville Friday and home Saturday against Hagerstown. Rushville, the Lady Lions, 11 and 8. They lost 39 to 37 at East Central. They're home with Shelbyville Tuesday, home with Pendleton Heights on Saturday. The boys' records for area teams, Cambridge City is 4 and 6. They lost to Northeastern, 82 to 53. Home with Try on Friday. They'll be at Smith Academy on Saturday. Union County is 7 and 5. They won at Franklin County, 54 to 28. Home with Shenandoah Friday. Franklin County is 1 and 9. They lost to Union County 54 to 28, as we mentioned. Home with East Central on Saturday. Rushville is 3 and 6. They lost to East Central 54 to 35. They'll be at Morristown Friday at Newcastle on Saturday. Centerville is 2 and 9. They lost 63 to 42 to Hagerstown. Home Friday with Knightstown. Richmond 7 and 7, one over McCutcheon, 61 to 57. They'll be at Muncie Central on Friday. A lot of action in the area. What do you think? Absolutely. You can get a chance tomorrow night to come out and watch the swimmers and then the senior get night, them right? Started senior night and then okay. stick around and watch the finish of the gymnastics. How many seniors how many seniors on this senior or uh, swimming? I squad? think there's ten. Oh wow. Six girls and four boys <laughs> if I'm correct. Okay, so a lot of uh, a lot of kids will be leaving the team then. Yeah, and you just hope you keep filling in. You know, <laughs> the next group come in and find some out of the CAS program and the middle school program and bring them along for next year. So you call that reloading? Is that what they call that? Yeah, you just kind of find the next body. We hope, we hope it's a reload every year. So we, don't, we hope we don't have to reload. It's just a continuation of where we're at. But uh, Daryl and our Jonathan have done a good job. Yes, Paula Taylor yeah. and Chrissy with our divers and our swimmers. So. Uh, with uh, winter sports winding down, I suppose you have the spring sports schedules completed. Or if you yeah, haven't, you better get to Nope, They're completed. <laughs> Getting ready to send them off to the calendar maker. So <laughs> okay. you know, get those little sports calendars back out before the little pocket calendars. Can you tell us what the first thing is? Well, we got softball and baseball. Baseball opens up about April 1st. We did have a couple games scheduled over spring break with softball. We were going to play Oldenburg Academy one day over spring yeah. break. and We were going to play Delta over spring break, but they canceled the contract on us and us and Lafayette Central Catholic couldn't work out a deal this year to play at Westfield so but those will be the first ones and then right after that track starts as soon as spring breaks over so that in March right at the end for okay. softball they'll play the end of March. Right towards the end of March March 30th March 29th okay. right in there and then yeah. we'll start rolling about April 2nd so <laughs> be here before we not let's hope the warm weather just keeps getting better <laughs> don't hold your breath Thanks for joining us, Brent. It's always a Happy pleasure to, to have you here on the Spartan Sports Report. And uh, uh, let's get the Spartans uh, a bunch of wins here. Sounds good. Hope everybody has a great 2019, and we'll just keep moving along. Sam and I agree with that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching this edition of Spartans Report here on TV3. Good evening. <laughs>